Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to our workbook lessons discussion group. And so today we are going over the introduction to the workbook and the first seven lessons. But before we do so, um, thought we would just take a moment first to center ourselves and to just quiet the mind. So if you'd like, you can close your eyes. I'm going to read just a couple passages from the text that I've selected for us for today. So first, a couple deep breaths. First, I'm just gonna read something briefly from chapter 18, the section, I need do nothing. To do nothing is to rest and make a place within you where the activity of the body ceases to demand attention. So into this place, the Holy Spirit comes and there abides. He will remain when you forget and the body's activities return to occupy your conscious mind. Yet there will always be this place of rest to which you can return. And you will be more aware of this quiet center of the storm than all its raging activity. This quiet center in which you do nothing will remain with you, giving you rest in the midst of every busy doing on which you are sent. For from this center will you be directed how to use the body sinlessly. And from this center, before we return to doing things with the body, joining with the other bodies here, I might just read one more thing from chapter two, a favorite prayer to guide us in how to operate as we do things with the body. And I will adjust slightly for the group. So we are here only to be truly helpful. We are here to represent him who sent us. We do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent us will direct us. We are content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with us. We will be healed as we let him teach us to heal. When you are ready, you can open your eyes, come back to this space together. The quiet center remains, but we can join again. And I will share screen so you can see the document that I've prepared for us today. Give me a thumbs up, uh, Johanna, if you can see that. Thank you. Okay, so for today, we are going over the introduction to the workbook, which is a wonderful thing to um, see for the first time, if this is your first time. And it's a wonderful thing to revisit if you have already seen this before, but perhaps um, forgotten some of what it suggests to us. So we're going to go over the introduction. And then I have the first seven lessons here for us as well. I've highlighted some passages if we need to for time, um, cut things down, or we can just read everything as is. But I thought definitely starting with the introduction would be a good place to start. And then we can see what we'd like to do with the lessons. Yes, Johanna. Good. Um, I was wondering if you could enlarge it a little. Yes, let's see if I can. If you could do view and then full screen, that might help. My mouse seems to be jammed oh, up. Let's see. Does that make it any better? I might a need little, to just... Just a little. Because there's a, like a sidebar that is not mm. necessary. Oh, anyway. Oh, my... I suppose it's fine. Outline here. Now that I did that, I don't know how to get those controls back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> View again on a <clears throat> escape, maybe. Can I just say something? Oh, uh, quickly? there we are. Yes. I was just going to say that if, if anybody runs into trouble at any time, remember that we can access it in our wonderful online book. I, I can't see or what you've got, so I, I work right off of the uh, site. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the the web edition is um, a great way to be able to follow along as well if you do not wish to follow what you see from me on the screen here. I did just find out how to hide that outline and make the text it a little looks bigger. It looks perfect now. And the thing is, sometimes the one who facilitates selects uh, certain paragraphs. So um, if you if you can read along, share screen, which you you can't. I'm sorry, Ardith, but that that. No, it's okay. Yeah. 
Go All ahead. Right. I, I usually find my way. Yeah, yeah. Ardith keeps up with us just fine. <laughs> All right. I got so. good leaders. That's why. Thank you. <laughs> So the introduction here, we have uh, nine paragraphs, right? and I thought it would be a good, to, I highlighted a few things, but I thought it would be good, um, unless we have other ideas, to actually read the entire introduction. Um, we can take turns reading. Does anybody uh, prefer to read? Yeah. Sharon, and I, let's see, I can't see all of you. Is anybody, Keith's raising a hand, Peter. Right. Okay, so why don't we go Sharon, Keith, Peter, and you can repeat three times. Okay. Sound good? Okay. A, theoret <clears throat> a theoretical foundation such as the text provides is necessary as a framework to make the exercises in this workbook meaningful. Yet it is doing the exercises that will make the goal of the course possible. An untrained mind can accomplish nothing. It is the purpose of this workbook to train your mind to think along the lines the text sets forth. The exercises are very simple. They do not require a great deal of time and it does not matter where you do them. They need no preparation. The training period is one year. The exercises are numbered one to 365. Do not undertake to do more than one set of exercises a day. The workbook is divided into two main sections. The first dealing with the, with the undoing of the way you see now and the second with the acquisition of true perception. With the exception of the review periods, each day's exercises are planned around one central idea, which is stated first. This is followed by a description of the specific procedures by which the idea for the day is to be applied. The purpose of the workbook is to train your mind in a systematic way to a different perception of everyone and everything in the world. The exercises are planned to help you generalize the lessons so that you will understand that each of them is equally applicable to anyone and everything you see. Transfer of training and true perception does not proceed as does transfer of the training of the world. If true perception has been achieved in connection with any person, situation or event, total transfer to everyone and everything is certain. On the other hand, one exception held apart from true perception makes its accomplishments anywhere impossible. The only general rules to be observed throughout then are first, that the exercises be practiced with great specificity, as will be indicated. This will help you to generalize the ideas involved to every situation in which you find yourself and to everyone and everything in it. Second, be sure that you do not decide for yourself that there are some people, situations, or things to which the ideas are inapplicable. This will interfere with transfer of training. The very nature of true perception is that it has no limits. It is the opposite of the way you see now. The overall aim of the exercises is to increase your ability to extend the ideas you will be practicing to include everything. This will require no effort on your part. The exercises themselves meet the conditions necessary for this kind of transfer. Some of the ideas the workbook presents, you will find hard to believe and others may seem to be quite startling. This does not matter. You are merely asked to apply the ideas as you are directed to do. You are not asked to judge them at all. You are asked, you are asked only to use them. It is their use that will give them meaning to you and will show you that they are true. Remember only this. You need not believe the ideas, you need not accept them, and you need not even welcome them. Some of them you may actively resist. None of this will matter or decrease their efficacy, but do not allow yourself to make exceptions in applying the ideas the workbook contains and whatever your reactions to them, to the ideas may, and whatever your reactions to the ideas may be, use them. Nothing more than this, than that is required. Great, thank you all. 
And so does anybody have anything they would like to share, say about the introduction? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say one quick thing. I sh should have put my hand up. Sorry, next time I will. Um, it's just to bring attention to the very first line in the introduction and see what everybody says about that, because it seems to be come up a lot. I see it in the group, and I've seen it around uh, people, whether what order you're supposed to do the, the course in. And some people get really stuck on this. So I, I would be interested to see what everyone has to say about a theoretical foundation, such as the text provides, is necessary as a framework to make the exercises in this workbook meaningful. So anyway, that's, that's my question put out there. Great. Thank you, Ardith, for that question. And I see, Keith, that your hand is raised. Would you like to answer that question? Or did you have another thought that you were going to introduce? I have another thought. Okay. So if you'll, if you don't mind, just a moment, we'll see. Would anybody like to respond to Ardith, the question about this first sentence? It surprises me. Uh, I because <clears throat> it almost looks like it's saying um, that you really you you really need to have an understanding of the text, or maybe I'm looking at that wrong, but it says that the, a theoretical foundation, such as the text provides, is necessary as a framework to make the exercises in the workbook meaningful. Mm -hmm. That. Um, and, and then the reason it kind of surprises me is because then it does go on to say, you don't have to believe this. You don't have to, you don't have to just do it. <laughs> don't think about it, just do it. And yeah. uh, so. Does not, that almost seem contradictory? Well, not really contradictory. I And I, I think it's absolutely true that the more, the more I personally understand the text and the more I am immersed in it, the more all of the things in the uh, daily lessons make sense to me. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon, for adding that. And Peter, you raised your hand. Would you like to answer this question? Um, or is that for something uh, else? Yeah, I think uh, I have a, I had a thought, but I don't need to go there. So I, I'm ready to introduce a different concept when we're ready, or okay. idea from the introduction. Okay, okay. Yeah. Anybody else have anything they'd like to say about that first sentence, about the theoretical foundation? If nobody else pops in, I just want to say one thing. And if there, if nobody wants to come forward with it, that's fine. <clears throat> it was just, that, as I said, I'd, I'd heard it a lot and just had wanted to get someone else's uh, look at it. Uh, the, the key word for me, I don't know if it is for anybody else, is that word necessary. That's where I think the hang up was anyway, but thank mm -hmm. you for the input. Mm -hmm. No problem. And Johanna's raising her hand. I think she wants to say something. Yeah. Um, in the text, it says such as. And so what I've, I've, I've come up on people who have a background in the, the a theoretical background from other uh, sources that harmonize with what the course is teaching. And they seem to do fine with the workbook lessons. Um, so I suppose it's it's the non-duality thing, <laughs> the, teaching, the <laughs> yeah. teaching of oneness, which is which is I suppose uh, wherever you get it from, that's that's the, the underlying theoretical premise, I suppose. Mm -hmm. That Thank makes you, sense, Johanna. Why, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Especially, I agree with that. By the way, thank you, mm. thank you for the time. Yeah, I appreciate that too, Johanna. I think um, I was just reading last night, Journey Without Distance by Robert Scutch. And, um, you know, for Helen, the scribe, she did not know a lot of those Eastern ideas before they came through. Um, but yeah, like what Johanna said, if someone's already steeped in some of that, and I know they also say right in, um, I think the course in more than one place that some will start with the text and some will start with the workbook. Yeah. And yeah. right, yep. so, yep. okay. Now let's see here, Keith, you put your hand down. Uh, would you still like to say something or no? no I changed my mind. Okay, Peter. Um, Ma Maggie, I see that Regina has her hand up. Yes, and I think Peter was first. Um, oh, okay. So we'll just let Peter go and then Regina. Sorry, yeah. No problem. 
So what really jumps out to me um, is paragraph seven. The overall aim of the exercises is to increase your ability to extend the ideas you will be practicing to include everything. And then this is reiterated here again. Um, uh, will be used. Uh, that, uh, I don't. I'm not seeing it right here. But the idea is to expand our perception. You know, and uh, so that's what's interesting for me is this idea that. Oh, here. Be sure that you do not decide for yourself that there are some people, situations, or things to which the ideas are inapplicable. This will interfere with the transfer of training. So, so it really is, this is mind training, and it really is to begin to broaden my scope, my perception, uh, and ultimately reverse. I mean, it says somewhere in the text, I believe, you know, the goal of the course is a complete reversal of, of thought, of how we now think. So um, I've been very conscious of that doing the workbook lessons now since January 1st. This idea of not excluding anything and, ex and just applying it to everything that I see. So that's all I want to say. Yes, thank you, Peter. I think I highlighted some things here too. And that was kind of the, the point that kept sticking out to me as I was doing some highlighting. Now, uh, yes, Regina. Yeah, in, re in regards to the first uh, question that Ardeth asked, um, I'm thinking if I'm interpreting it right, it's do you have to read the one uh, the, the text first and then the workbook? Is that what the question was? I don't know that we can. I think Ardith was, is that what people are seeing and what do people think about that? Okay. Uh, what I'm seeing is that it's such a gradual process that you kind of bounce back and forth between them and they just reinforce each other in tandem, kind of. That was my two cents. That's all. <laughs> yeah, no, that is great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, yes, Ardith. Oh, sorry. I will get off this point because we're moving on. But I just wanted to say, I for that question just asked now, uh, I think Johanna really, I think, answer at least from my uh understanding and i don't know how it sets with other people but my first thing is i i did not read the text first but i i am now <clears throat> and i think that the theoretical foundation definitely can be gotten from other systems too that was my feeling i was wondering if anyone else saw it that way so uh, although we'll say the second time around reading this text it gets better it gets richer and so i would definitely advise it to anybody thank you Yes, thank you, Ardeth. Would anyone else like to share anything or say anything about the introduction before we move on to yeah. our... Yes, Johanna. One, one, one last um, um, remark, I suppose. I, I don't know any other curriculum that plainly says, you can think this is ridiculous, but just, just do it <laughs> and it'll help. I mean, th there's no textbook that I know of that, that would... And, and an introduction with that with that statement. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I like I highlighted that whole last paragraph yeah. there, Johanna. <laughs> and it's coming right off of reading that book again, um, Journey Without Distance. All right. That Helen liked this. Helen liked this part because Helen didn't agree. And when she was scribing the workbook, she actually relaxed a little bit because it said, you don't need to believe. Oh, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, that's good that you that you mentioned that because now I can, this is probably addressed to her and to those who, who feel like her. Yeah. Yes, Yeah. I think so, I think so. Okay. Uh -huh. So we have the first seven lessons and they do feel like quite a package, um, that first seven. So I know oftentimes um, when I've been present and there's another facilitator, it's asked if anyone has a particular lesson they would like to start with. And I would still like to offer that if anyone feels that one of the first seven really is something they wanna make sure we get to discuss, we can start there or we can just start at one and work our way through and see how far we can get. So if anyone has any preferences here, they can feel free to speak up right now, raise your hand or just chime right in. Yes, Peter. Oh. And I think someone so, said something. Um, 
Yeah, so this is, uh, I mean, talk about thought reversal. You know, the first seven lessons, uh, even, even after 30 years coming back to this and just really saying, and here's the thing, he means this literally. This is not metaphor. This is not, you know, uh, this is literal. The, the stuff that we're reading here, that's, that's why I interpret it at least. But I always like lesson number five. I'm never upset for the reason I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I am not angry for the reason I think I'm not afraid for the reason I think and I find myself fighting this, you know, even, again, after many, many, many years, it's like, no, I am angry because of what they did to me or because of what they're not doing to me or because of, you know, I have all these reasons and it still seems to me to be so real and so true. And then I come to lesson five and I'm never upset for the reason I think, you know? And so for me, this is part of the, again, the thought reversal, but it's also allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and give me a different interpretation. You know, I, it's like, I guess I really don't know why I'm upset. I don't, I don't know why I'm angry. And here's the other thing. I studied, I studied the course with a, another fellow and he says, I'm never upset or excited for the reason I think. So it could be the negative, but it's also the positive. You know, it's like, it's like, I don't know. I have to go to the Holy Spirit in my saner moments, which I still lack at times, but go to the Holy Spirit and say, please, you know, I don't know why I'm upset. I don't know why I'm happy. I don't know why I'm excited, you know? And then later, obviously, in the workbook, he reminds me that I don't, I don't know my own best interests, um, which are usually related to either feeling excited or upset. So, uh, so the, I'll stop there. But that's that's my relationship with these first seven lessons. Actually, mm -hmm. the first ten. That's it's a great. It's a, and I think there was um, some agreement. There was some ah yes, lesson five when you said that. So shall we start with lesson five? Would we like to go there and read that right now? Let's do that, so we can see what Peter I is I saw talking Christina about. Christina raise her hand. Oh, was there a hand raise? Let's see here. I don't see Christina. Did you have yeah. something you want to say? There was there was something that. Um, that comes to mind and I, when I read it, it, it came to mind like where, yes, I know what I'm, what I'm happy with because I'm so grateful. So where is that in this respect? Like it's just kind of, it's like a disconnect for me because yeah, I'm, I'm very, there are moments that I'm full of joy because I'm so grateful for certain things. But this is saying that I come into the Holy Spirit saying, I don't know why I'm grateful, and I am. So it is a disconnect for me. And I, somebody, if somebody can explain that to me, I would love it because I can see that with being upset, but I can see it with the positive emotion, but I can see it with the negative for sure. It's an excellent question, Christina. I'm sure that a lot of people can relate to that. I know I once asked this exact question to a um, course teacher that I don't know if anyone here is familiar with, um, Kieran Jay, but it's someone who I became acquainted with at some point and um, really respected um, her way of talking about this. So I actually asked this exact question um, I use the example of being out in my backyard uh, playing with my dog because, oh, you can see her on the screen right now. She's sleeping, but she's um, just something that really lights up my heart and I get excited to do things with her. And I just have such a nice time <laughs> on my lunch break out in the backyard, getting her a little exercise, getting myself a little break from work. And I was reflecting on this one time about how Right, like you said, Christina, the mind wants to go to this when it's something we don't feel good about, but we don't think to do it so much when it's something we are feeling good about. And so I ask, how can I be grateful for what I'm experiencing? Because I don't think the course is asking me to try to deny any good feelings that I am having. But how do I make sure I'm not making this real for myself and um, letting myself believe that my feelings come from the dog and what I'm doing with the dog? And she said, why not just ask for help remembering that any good feelings you are feeling come from your connection with spirit. And I loved it. And I've used it ever since. And I do find that helpful. So I don't know if that speaks to you at all. Yeah, yes. Um, 
But that's what I, I didn't understand that it allows you to go there because it's the way it comes across. Um, you know, I, I, when you say it like that, yeah, absolutely, because it all comes from spirit. So it's not a surprise, but, um, but the words were confusing me. But anyway, I will ponder on that. I will think about it a little more or not. <laughs> but, Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if I misheard your question, but it, does anybody else have anything they want to say? Is Susan, did you want to respond with another dog? Yeah, this is Tina. Yes. I'd love to respond. And um, Christina, I'm new to the course, but I am not new to um, spirit. So I don't always say the right thing the right way. So I'll just, my intention's good though. You guys straighten me out when I when I get off the path here, but my sense of this, and I again as a newbie, is that all of those expressions of emotion, whether it's um, good or bad, happy or sad, are part of duality and part of ego, from my perspective of what I've studied so far, and that. Um, Spirit, steady, consistent peace. It is the peace that pathes, passeth all understanding. So these, not to contradict Maggie, the wisdom of the person who obviously knows way more about the course than I do. I'm just bringing in a fresh set of eyes. And this is how I would answer that question. I love your answer. It really resonates. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Susan. Oh. And Regina, I think, is next. Oh, yes. Um, Christina, when you were uh, talking, uh, you used a word that I, it, it made me think of something um, that I've learned in doing the course and, and a lot of other spiritual practices that I've done as well. There's this idea that, that I'm upset for, I'm not upset for the reason I think, so therefore I shouldn't be upset. Well, that is the attitude I had toward negative emotions. I shouldn't have them. And um, as I'm doing the course more and more, I find that I'm much more accepting of exactly whatever emotion. And if I want to be angry, boy, I'm going to be angry. I mean, I'm not going to deny that myself that experience just because I'm not upset. Just because I'm wrong doesn't mean I can't enjoy the anger because um, Otherwise, it's a it seems like a denial that isn't useful. But you know, it does make a lot of sense once that initial uh, calms down. Then I, and then I'm able to look at it and say, "Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I laugh about. I can laugh about it then too." But I always do try to allow myself. I don't deny that. Oh, I'm not supposed to be feeling that. That was something I was raised with or some, I, I don't know where I got that idea, but I have to, I shouldn't be having those emotions or something like that. Anyway, but the course has been helping me with that. Thank you. Thank you for adding that, Regina and Peter. And then I see Isabel physically raising your hand. So we'll go there next. So I just want to clarify that um, I was sharing <clears throat> my interpretation or a discussion that I've had with somebody else the, this par this lesson is not addressing what we might consider positive emotions. But what I would say for me is this, the lesson for me is about not blaming something outside of me for the way I feel, whether it's positive or negative. And it's not to say that I shouldn't feel, I, I appreciate what was just shared a minute ago, that I shouldn't feel negative feelings or I shouldn't feel positive feelings. That's not, that's not how I'm interpreting this. But for me, it's to begin to recognize that I'm really kind of clueless when it comes to what's driving my experience. Mm -hmm. And to understand that it's not something outside of me that's making me feel good or making me feel bad. Now I will say too, the course says all true joy comes from doing God's will. So, so I think it would be natural to experience joy when I'm in alignment with the Holy Spirit, when I'm in alignment with, with God in terms of, of um, whatever I seem to be doing in the world. So. So it's more for me just to begin to recognize that I may not consciously be aware of what's driving them, what's, what's motivating that feeling and, and thus motivating whatever actions or inaction. And to recognize, again, for me, it's about, this is you know, the responsibility for sight 
you know, nobody and nothing makes me feel anything good or bad. You know, at some level, I'm choosing all of that. I'm choosing my emotions. I'm choosing my thoughts, feelings, my words, and my actions. So uh, I just want to clarify it with that. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Peter. I think that is helpful um, tying that together for us. And yes, Isabel. You're just on mute um, if you want to unmute yourself first. You got me now? Yes. Okay. So, may, uh, yeah. So, it's just a simple answer. Um, maybe it doesn't matter what we're grateful for or what we're angry for or what we're anything for, as long as we feel the associated feeling, you know, of joy for certainly gratitude for feeling joyful. Anger is hard to suppress. Does it really matter what we're angry about? Does it really matter what we're joyful about? When I feel joy, it's just, you know, it's a pure emotion. Anger is a different story. That's a little trickier. You know what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say here? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. 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 You know, the feeling of things, just feeling it, not trying to, and I'm not saying doing that all the time, but life seems to be a lot simpler when you feel the emotion. You know, you experience, it's the experience, mm. it's the present moment of mm. the, that, whatever it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's the fodder for these lessons, certainly. Right? Mm, thank you, Isabel. Now I see Sharon and then Ardeth. Okay, well, <clears throat> my thought is that um, if we're, if we're, experience that there's only really two emotions there's fear and there's love and so um love extends and i think for me when i'm in a place of love it's always joyful and uh anything that is not that is somehow related to fear whether it's worry whether it's anger whether it's uh mistrust any of those negative um connotations uh, that are associated with emotions all come from fear as their basis. And so uh, for me, I, I just need to check in and see, uh, is this making me happy and, and making me feel joyful? And if it's not, then I know I'm listening to the wrong teacher. That's yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Yes, Ardeth. I really like what Sharon just said. Absolutely. Um, the only thing I thought of here was uh, on that anger. Uh, the text does say anger is never justified, but it also makes kind of an, an inference that it will happen. What it's saying, to me anyway, it's saying these emotions will come up. They're all part of the egoic experience, but make sure that you just don't kid yourself and try to justify it. And I also agree with whoever said about stuffing these emotions down is not good because we're supposed to bring all the illusions to the truth. And anger is certainly an elusive or illusion uh, emotion. So mm -hmm. I guess just don't justify. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the key. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Arda. <laughs> Shall we read the lesson we are talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it because we've had a great discussion already, but um, I do have it here ready for us. Uh, would somebody like to read lesson five? Let's see if I can see all of you. I'll Who's read that? it. Isabel? Great. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'm never up for the reason to think. This idea, like the preceding one, can be used with any person's situation or event think is causing you pain. Apply it specifically to whatever you believe is the cause of upset, using the description of feeling in whatever terms seem accurate to you. The upset may seem fear uh, or... Isabel, do you mind holding on just a sec? Is that cutting up for everybody else, too, yeah, or is that just yeah. me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, Isabel. I think, I think there might be something going on with your connection there. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yes. you were cutting just enough where there was kind of a run on sentence There's effect taking words place. Drop out. Words are dropping out. Yes, yeah. yes, we were missing some words. So I don't know if you, um, you, you, may, you may try disconnecting or reconnecting, seeing if that helps you at all. 
Okay, let somebody else read it then and I'll. I'll yes, read. thank yeah. you. Thank you, though. I appreciate <laughs> that. Would anybody else like to read lesson five? I can read it. It's Regina. Regina, thank you. I'll start from the beginning, I guess. Okay, thank you. I am never upset for the reason I think. This idea, like the preceding one, can be used with any situation, person, situation, or event you think is causing you pain. Apply it specifically to where, whatever you believe is the cause of your upset, using the description of the feeling in whatever term seems accurate to you. The upset may seem to be fear, worry, depression, anxiety, anger, hatred, jealousy, or any number of forms, all of which will be perceived as different. This is not true. However, until you learn that form does not matter, each form becomes a proper subject for the exercises for the day applying the same idea to each of them separately is the first step in ultimately recognizing they are all the same. When using the idea for today for a specific perceived cause of an upset in any form, use both the name of the form in which you see the upset and the cause which you ascribe to it. For example, I am not angry at blank for the reason I think. I'm not, I, I'm not afraid I'm stuck on anger. I am not afraid of blank for the reason I think. But again, this should not be substituted for practice periods in which you first search your mind for sources of upset in which you believe and forms of upset which you think result. In these exercises, more than in the preceding ones, you may find it hard to be indiscriminate and to avoid giving greater weight to some subjects than to others. It might help to precede the exercises with the statement, there are no small upsets, they are all equally disturbing to my peace of mind. Then examine your mind for whatever is distressing you, regardless of how much or how little you think it is doing so. You may also find yourself less willing to apply today's idea to some perceived sources of upset than to others. If this occurs, think first of this. I cannot keep this form of upset and let the others go. For the purposes of these exercises, then, I will regard them all as the same. Then search your mind for no more than a minute or so and try to identify a number of forms of different forms of upset that are disturbing you, regardless of the relative importance you may give them. Apply the idea for today to each of them, using the name of both the source and the upset as you perceive it, and of the feeling as you experience it. Further examples are, I am not worried about blank for the reason I think. I am not depressed about blank for the reason I think. Three or four times during the day is enough. Thank you so much, Regina. And I was just noticing while Regina was reading, I had highlighted this sentence here. I feel kind of speaks a little bit to what Sharon said. Right. So everything's either fear or love. And here with upset, we're talking about fear and how it can show up as worry, depression, anxiety, anger, hatred, jealousy, right? All of which will be perceived as different, but this is not true. So now, does anybody else have anything they would like to share or say about lesson five? Mm -hmm. Yes, Johanna. Yeah, th um, this is not true, it says. And all those forms represent um, represent the separation. That's how I see it. They represent the separation. But we live in the world of duality, in the world of form. And so how does mm, the belief separation come to us in these different forms? And it's the same with the peace of God. The peace of God is our is or love, if you're in love, Karen mentioned. Um, uh, how does peace come to us in this world? It comes through joy by playing with the dog. It comes through enjoyment of, of a sunset or whatever it is. Because we are in the world of form. And so um, peace and love use form to come to us in a way. And then, of course, the caveat is not to attach your your well-being to that particular form but to recognize my joy comes from love my joy comes from peace and i experience it in this particular activity 
that was just I thought I'd add yes thank you I I feel how that connects very much to what I was um, saying earlier with the dog so thank you so much for that Johanna yeah it's it's the love in you linking up with the love in the dog Mm. I like that Mm. yeah Uh, anything anyone (laughs) else would like to add or would we like to move on to another lesson oh Christina yes here I'll stop share so we can see each other mm-hmm. sorry about that um the um the question the the, uh, the the thing when i thought about the exercise if i have to do the exercise it would drive me crazy because i would try to find the reason if i said i'm not worried uh, because of the reason i think then i was try to think of well, what is worrying me or I am not, um, whatever the feeling is, I'm not happy with, because of the reason I think that I would be trying to find, um, I'm sorry, there's a lot of noise here, but my question, sorry about that. My question really has to do with, um, it would drain my mind because I'm, I'm always trying to figure things out. I was, I would start thinking about all those things, that exercise may end up there for me. Um, any thoughts or anybody else? Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I'm thinking as you say that, Christina, and I'm not sure which one it was that he said it for, but one of these initial lessons, he says really not to try to go longer than a minute um, because the mind will just get distracted and preoccupied into that kind of thinking. I, I think perhaps that maybe speaks a little bit to what you're saying is just really to keep it brief in these initial ones and not... <laughs> I, if I... If- if somebody says something that I'm wondering about, I can't stop. I'm obsessive. I will mm-hmm. think about that forever, but um, until I find out which one is, what is the reason? But so what is the idea of saying that is to find other reasons or to think of it in other ways? I was just trying to understand what my, mm, you know, what I am supposed to. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, Johanna and Peter also has his hand raised too. I know, Peter, did you want to respond to this question? And then Johanna as well? Okay, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, so I was going to say, uh, I totally appreciate the comment. I get it. And my response would be, well, there's 360 more lessons that eventually you'll understand why you're upset. Uh, you know, it's like, it's it's lesson five is just, it's it's raising the issue. But it really takes, for me, I can only speak for myself, it takes the, you know, working the entire workbook, working the text and the teacher's manual to begin to have a, a vague understanding of why I'm upset, you know? And, and uh, for me, and it does say it in the text and in the workbook, I believe that, you know, the sense, the sense of, the sense of, a sense of separation from God is the only loss that you need to heal. And so for me, the reason I feel upset is because I believe I'm separate from my source. And that creates all kinds of anxiety that comes out later in the workbook and it comes out in the text as well. So uh, I totally get it. And I would say, you got to give it a little time. You're going to work through a few more lessons to get to the bottom of that. Thank you, Peter. That's very helpful. Uh, Yes, Johanna, what did you want to say? I I wanted to say something similar, but Peter put it in very clear wording. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we um, are already kind of running low on our time. Um, We do have time to still look at another lesson. Would anyone have a preference of which one we look at next? We still have lessons one through four or six or seven that we could look at together right now. If there's no preference, I'll choose something for us. Um, yes, Sharon. Yeah. Um, lesson seven. I, I really like that one. Uh, I see only the past. Mm. Uh, Cause I don't know. I just feel like that one is really rich because, um, my mind doesn't, uh, normally think that, oh, this, you know, this is a, my past experience. Uh, this cup is, is, my past experience of a cup it doesn't have anything to do with the cup <laughs> and so this this one this one was just a good one for me i i really liked that and and it seems all of these lessons seem new this is my fourth year in a row doing the workbook i'm like in judy's slow learners group 
but um, I'm just amazed at how I learn new stuff or get a deeper understanding of these basic things. I was thinking when we go back to the beginning, I'm just going to be a whiz at all these because this is year four. It's like, uh, 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 u
Yes. Yeah, so would you like to read the whole thing? Or Johanna, you want to read part of it at least and pass it? Uh, yeah, I'll, re I'll start reading and then I'll, when I'll stop, somebody else can jump in. Okay, Lesson seven, I see only the past. This idea is particularly difficult to believe at first. Yet it is the rationale of all, for all of the preceding ones. It is the reason why nothing that you see means anything. It is the reason why you have given everything you see all the meaning that it has for you. It is the reason why you do not understand anything you see. It is the reason why your thoughts do not mean anything and why they are like the things you see. It is the reason why you are never upset for the reason you think. It is the reason why you are upset because you see something that is not there. Old ideas about time are very difficult to change because everything you believe is rooted in time and depends on your not learning these new ideas about it. Yet that is precisely why you need new ideas about time. This first time idea is not really so strange as it may sound at first. Somebody else. Yes, would somebody else like to pick up at paragraph three? Look at a cup. Take it. Oh. oh, go ahead. Whoever's no, go I'm ahead. Sorry. Whoever's doing, go. Uh, this is a this is a great paragraph. Look at a cup, for example. Do you see a cup, or are you merely reviewing your past experience <laughs> of picking up a cup, being thirsty, from a cup, feeling the rim of a cup against your lips? having breakfast and so on, are not your aesthetic reasons, uh, your aesthetic reactions to the cup too, based on that past experience. How else would you know whether or not this kind of cup will break if you drop it? What do you know about this cup except what you learned in the past? You would have no idea what this cup is except for your past learning. Do you then really see it? Look about you. This is equally true of whatever you look at. Acknowledge this by uh, applying the idea for today indiscriminately to whatever catches your eye. For example, I see only the past in this pencil. I see only the past in this shoe. I see only the past in this hand. I see only the past in that body. I see only the past in that face. Do not linger over any one thing in particular, but remember to omit nothing specifically. Glance briefly at each subject and then move on to the next. Three or four practice periods, each to last a minute or so, will be enough. Great. Thank you for reading that for us, Regina. Yes, any final thoughts or comments? Susan, is your hand raised um, for something new or still from before? Okay, from before. We've got our hands full with these seven lessons for, I mean, it, the practice doesn't stop after today, after the seventh day, right? It continues on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, Sharon. Well, I just wanted to, uh, before we leave, I just wanted to go to um, that last discussion that we had last week and the, um, the, comments that was made about that uh especially let me see um it was oh, a good discussion good please discussion. explain first but what it was about yeah so it, i was i was uh curious about the phrase where it says we forgive uh your world talking to god and yeah. i thought I, I didn't, that really stumped me. How, how could we forgive God's world when God's world is perfect? Um, so <clears throat> then um, I liked all the things that everyone said, but mainly what uh, Maggie, you went and looked at Ken Wapnick's uh, discussion about that specific thing. And uh, <clears throat> so what you directed us to is, uh, well, it comes from 
the sentencing question from lesson 359 father today we will forgive your world and let creation be your own and <clears throat> so you said ken wrote a whole paragraph in ex in explanation for that one sentence ken wrote god's world as we have seen is the real world we forgive it in the sense that we now accept it as what we want with no further desire to attack it which we were compelled to do in the self-defense when we chose to retain our identity as an individual self seemingly at home in the ego's world ego's world of specialness and death and so that that really helped me understand what Jesus meant when he said and you know I will forgive God's world. Today we forgive your world. So anyway, I just wanted to yeah. bring that up so, in case there was thank someone. Thank you, Sharon. There. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, there, there was there were some comments on the Facebook group about that. And uh, a couple of us uh, were emailing about it afterwards, right? So yeah. it's it's really good that you bring this up and that, and that you shared that view. It helped me a great deal too. Yeah. And if anybody is curious, that is just from the Journey Through the Workbook series with Ken Wapnick, um, which just P.S. Um, Sharon, I just learned that that audio is the audio. Yes. And Susan's holding it up for us. So the audio version is actually the audio of those books. I have both of them now and I was listening the other day and it does go right along with it. So... <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking at the hour and it is time for us to wrap up. And I do have a closing prayer prepared for us. So thank you everyone for joining together this time together. If you'd like, again, you can close your eyes or do whatever feels best for you to get comfortable just for a closing prayer to close out our discussion today. And this is one of my favorite prayers from workbook lesson 189. Father, we do not know the way to you, but we have called and you have answered us. We will not interfere. Salvation's ways are not our own, for they belong to you. And it is unto you we look for them. Our hands are open to receive your gifts. We have no thoughts we think apart from you and cherish no beliefs of what we are or who created us. Yours is the way that we would find and follow. And we ask but that your will, which is our own as well, be done in us and in the world, that it become a part of heaven now. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Great session, you guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day.